Welcome to episode 85. Uh, this is Woolen Spinning and my name is Rachel. Uh, it is Tuesday, November 21st and I am live streaming from um, just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia. I hope that you are well. We are um, sick again. I know I have complained about being sick so many times in the last year. I'm getting sick of complaining that we're sick. The kids um, have been coughing and up at night and we're just... Um, yeah, it's just the time of year and kindergarten. Everybody says kindergarten's really bad and it's definitely been um, really bad. So that is just the way it is. Thankfully, I'm only coughing. Like I don't actually feel terrible. Um, so that's actually good. So if I start coughing, I'm just going to call it a day and, and uh, pick up where we left off um, next time. So I have a little bit of housekeeping. I've got a few announcements and um, I have a really important announcement about December show. So I'm not gonna do an answer anything today because it just, the show and when it's live streamed, it just gets way too long. So um, I'm just gonna do our housekeeping and then we'll move right into all of the things that I have to show you today. So the first thing that I wanted to mention and you can see it here on the secondary screen is the color and breed studies. It has gone live. Katrina has started dying. Um, there is still, um, um, an opportunity to participate if you haven't um, been able to um, get your button gear yet. Um, there is more information in last episode so go check out episode 84 um, and I go into all the detail in that show about um, what we're doing and the colors, the colorways um, and all that stuff. There's also a blog post that I wrote up um, that helps you to navigate what the color and breed studies is all about and I have also got some information on Patreon so I will link to all of that in the show notes um, at welfordpearls.com or patreon.com slash welfordpearls and you don't have to support the show on Patreon to participate although if you are a patreon subscriber there are some discount codes so I hope that you take advantage of that um, and Katrina's Etsy shop is um, crafty jacks j-a-k-s so if you're looking for the listings and stuff like I said it'll be linked in the show notes but if you want to bypass all that and just go straight to Etsy um, it is um, etsy.com slash um, crafty jacks or just search crafty jacks Etsy shop and it'll come up <laughs> So that is ongoing and there will be a whole bunch of stuff forthcoming um, about my journey with um, color and breed studies um, over the next couple of months about how I break down all my stuff and how I'm going to be working on it and that's going to be part of the how I spin content on Patreon. So have a look out for that if you're a subscriber at that level and um, if you have any more questions about any of that please just don't hesitate to ask me because I am always happy to answer and um, help you navigate all of that. We're doing something kind of a little bit different in the Ravelry group. Um, there is a thread, I think I've started it. Um, if somebody has a chance to check for me, that would be awesome. In the Ravelry group, um, I, my friend Carrie from um, Glow Beauty from Within um, contacted me and she asked me if I would um, be interested in doing a fa la la cowl. Um, this is only knitting, it is knitting with commercial yarn. I don't normally um, knit with commercial yarn and I certainly don't necessarily um, participate in this kind of stuff but um, she asked and I said yes so I wrote up a huge um, blog post about all of this if you would like to participate there are multiple coupon codes if you're a patreon subscriber or if you are a um, just a viewer of the show um, I chose birch for my solid color and then I have um, all of these little minis that I'll be working with and um, I'm not sure what order I'm gonna put them all in yet. Um, I, I'm kind of torn about how to, how to organize all of that, but I sort of have a few ideas, and I'm actually thinking about maybe dividing them up into two separate shawl patterns and two separate projects. I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure, um, but I am gonna be, this is gonna be my Christmas project. So um, there aren't any rules about this um, this cowl. Um, we're just um, working with these rainbow minis and um, playing around with with some of the colorways from Carrie and sort of deciding. I'm I'm trying to decide how I'm going to knit them up. I, like I said, I have a few ideas. Um, I we so I'm going to jump a little bit here and be a bit convoluted for just a second. Um, we have some big Christmas plans this year. Um, unfortunately, um, some of Mike's family members aren't doing very well. There's a couple of major health issues going on in Mike's extended family, not immediate family, but still um, family that we're very close to and, and have a very close relationship with. So um, I am going to take a whole bunch of stuff 
off of my plate in December so that we can spend some time with those people. And the I'm going to sort of take just a couple of projects to work on when we um, go back east because normally I take like a suitcase full of stuff to work on because the kids are spending all their time with grandma and grandpa and I get to sit around and visit with my sister-in-law and um, other family members and I we do a lot of sitting. That's not going to be the case this time. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of visiting with um, these particular family members. So I am actually only going to take one or two projects. I think I'm going to take my I'm going to take a pair of socks to work on because they're super portable, and I'm going to take this project to work on. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you'll know that I. Um, generally knit what's called I call it my Christmas shawl quote-unquote and I sort of treat it like a prayer shawl kind of and I I think about all the things that happen throughout the year I think about what I want the year ahead to look like um, I think about um, family members um, you know all the people in our family and the relationships and my close friends and all that kind of stuff last year I meditated a lot on wool and spinning and what I wanted 2017 to look like for the show and so that is going to be um, my Glow Beauty from Within shawl this year. So I'm going to sort of channel all of that into um, this shawl. And um, part of that will be sort of figuring out how I want all of this to work together and how I kind of want it to look. So um, I hope that you'll consider participating. Like I said, if you're a Patreon member, there are some coupon codes and for 30% off in uh, Carrie's Etsy shop. And if you are um, not a Patreon subscriber but still want to participate, we would love to have you. There are coupon codes for you as well. They'll be on the blog. They are on the blog, um, wellforpearls.com. And like I said, I'll link to all of it in the show notes. So there's a couple of things going on in the Ravelry group right now, all very exciting um, and sort of ongoing over the next few months. Color and breed studies is going on until March of 2018. So we've got lots and lots of time and um, we are studying the breed fin. So I'm kind of jumping around quite a bit about those two big um, spin alongs and the knit along, but I hope you followed all of that. And if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, Zero to Hero is going to be um, t winding down towards the um, middle of December. Um, I Last year I waited until January to draw all the prizes and whatnot and announce all of that, but I'm actually going to do that in the next show. So if you have stuff that you wanted to submit for 2017 for Zero to Hero, please get it in. I have ended up with quite a number of prizes sort of by accident. Um, uh, quite a few people sent me things that I that were for Zero to Hero and I've ended up with some pretty great prizes. So there's a there's some fiber, um, there's some carding cloth, there's like a whole bunch of stuff. So get your submissions in for Zero to Hero for 2017. Even if you're not finished your project and you're going to carry it over into eight, 2018, still submit it in the FO thread. It is a chatter free thread. I'm really sorry to anybody who I've had to delete your comments and your, you know, beautiful, well done kind of comments. It's a chatter three free thread and I need to keep it chatter free for when I do the random number generator. So um, any of those types of comments, the well done, looks gorgeous, um, just community building type posts that are just really kind to one another throw them in the chatter thread and um, just your FOs in the zero to hero um, oh and okay so the last thing that I need to talk about is December so like I mentioned a few minutes ago we've got a bunch of um, um, stuff going on in December um, I am only gonna have one show in December normally we have two shows per month 12 months of the year and in December I've always taken the last two weeks off and usually it doesn't affect the show schedule. This year it theoretically doesn't affect the show schedule to take the last two weeks off in December. However, um, like I said, we've got these, this family stuff going on and so we are going to do one show in December. It's going to be live streamed. Um, it will probably be the week of the 12th. Um, it'll probably be that Tuesday, which actually I don't know what that Tuesday is off the top of my head. Does anybody know what that date is? Can you guys um, look it up quick? Um, I think it's the 13th or maybe it is the 12th. I'm not sure. Um, it will be live. It will be a longer show. Um, so prepare for sort of a longer live stream. And um, it will be the only one in December. And like I said, it's just kind of because it's an odd month. So I hope that um, you guys will be able to join us because like I said, it's going to be a longer show and um, I'm going to sort of tie up all the stuff that I, that 20, it's the 12th. Perfect. Thanks, Katrina. Um, so Tuesday, December 12th is probably when the show will be recorded. It'll be a long show and um, it'll be the last one for 2017, which I can't believe I'm saying, how are we at the end of 2017 already? That's just insane. Um, it's just crazy. 
so I have a couple of things to show you. I have a lot of finished yarn. Um, I haven't had a lot of finished yarn recently. I think it's been, uh, I don't know if anybody can remember, but it's been quite a number of at least a couple of shows, a few shows since I've had finished yarn and I have quite a lot to show you. Um, part of that is because I was able to get away for a weekend with some of my girlfriends and we had a lot of, of fun. I also took a lot with me and I got a lot done. Um, I also have some new cast-ons. I just started some new stuff and I actually started um, one of these quite a number of weeks ago and I just never showed it to you. I have no idea why. Um, it's not, it didn't make it into my show notes. I didn't write it down. I have no idea why I haven't shown you yet. Yeah. Um, and I also have some sampling that I have been doing because I am actually doing the guild program tonight for our local Weavers and Spinners Guild. Um, remember back in July, I took that Bast Fibers uh, workshop. It was a three day intensive. It was totally overwhelming. I came home with a ton of knowledge and information. Um, and I'm actually, and so the guild, our guild um, does this thing called scholarships. So you can apply for a scholarship and then um, you can take your workshop or your course. And then you have to pay back, quote unquote, um, your workshop. So you can do that in the form of like a binder for in the library. Um, you can do a guild program. Um, you can do some sort of, you can do a workshop and offer it to the, to the guild. There's a whole bunch of different stuff you can do. Your imagination is kind of the limit. Anyways, they asked me if I could please do a guild program because it went really well with the theme this year. So, because we have themes every year for our programs, so they kind of follow this theme every year. So like this year, I think it's like, you know, different fibers. Next year, I think it's color. Um, so anyways, long story short, um, I'm doing my payback tonight and uh, I've been getting all of my bast fibers ready and um, Heidi of Vegan Yarn, um, if you haven't looked her up, she is, um, I think she's veganyarn.ca, uh, veganyarn.com, veganyarn.com, and it's not yarns, it's yarn with no S. Um, veganyarn.com. So my friend Heidi, um, her and I met up at work on Saturday night. Um, she um, had, she's going to be um, there at the guild tonight, but she had offered a couple of free samples for us um, for the guild members to play with. So I have actually been playing with those samples, um, just with two of them, because that's all I could get done. Um, hi to everybody who's joining us in the chat channel, by the way. Um, I see Katrina and Candy and Grace and Eve. And of course, I already said hello to Becca. So, excuse the, sorry for the noise in the, in the microphone. Um, so this was one of the fibers that um, um, Heidi gave me to give out to the guild. So this is some spoilers for you tonight, Katrina, because Katrina is going to be at guild tonight. Um, so this is called FIFO, F-I-F-O. It's a natural color of cotton. So this is a natural cotton color. Um, this isn't dyed. This is this is the particular cotton plant, and it's that color. And then the other one that um, that was colored cotton that she um, um, offered for the guild to sample tonight is this gorgeous, like avocadoy green color. It's sort of like a grello. Um, it's greener than my um, stone point in the background because that's more like a mustard. This is more like um, like a like grello, like a yellowy greeny color it's sort of avocado-y she has another natural uh cotton color that's called avocado that's a little bit greener than this and this one she calls dark green and this is the these are both organic fair trade 
um, cotton for people to play with tonight. So I divided up the um, all of the fiber into 25. I, I always make roughly 25 sample packs for people and then I always bring extra fiber just in case. Anyway, so I spun them up. So this is the green that I spun up and this is the brown, the FIFO or FIFO, I don't know how that said. And then I boiled them and I set the twist and holy smokes, let me just switch my cameras around. Um, oh my goodness, the, um, the brown is just gorgeous. It is so pretty. Um, I don't know. Let me just focus it a bit. Um, uh, it's just, so these are, these are boiled. Um, you boil cotton, actually all plant-based fibers when you finish spinning them. You boil them for um, you, five minutes, an hour, it doesn't really matter. Um, like linen and flax and stuff, they can be quite dirty, so you often have to boil them and set the twist for a bit longer. But um, they're just like this this brown. I'll see if I can get it a bit closer for you guys so you can really see. Um, it's not going to focus that close. Anyways, it's just absolutely gorgeous, and they darkened quite a bit. Like it's quite amazing how the color changed after it was um, boiled. Now, I recently and I left it in the other room and I was going to show you guys and I, I just left it in the other room. I actually ordered for my um, Susie, for my Magicraft Susie, this bobbin here is is um, is one of them. Uh, the baby bobbin set. So you see how the bobbin is, is quite a bit different than what you would expect for a regular um, Magicraft. Um, these are called baby bobbins and I bought the um, lace whirl. I can't remember what it's called. If it's like the extra fast whirl or something. It goes up to something like 36 to 1. So these bobbins have a really thick core and um, they have the uh, brake at the place to put the, the uh, brake band at the back. And um, I one of the reasons why I bought this kit, I didn't buy the lace kit because I wanted, um, why didn't I buy the lace kit? Oh, I wanted the whirl. So the lace kit only comes with the lace flyer and the bobbins. It doesn't come with the, um, with the whirl, I don't think. Let me double check that. Um, it was so long ago now that I actually don't remember what the cincher was as to why I bought one over the other. Um, so let me look it up because I don't want to mislead anybody because I know there's a lot of people out there who um, often look at all these different accessories on their wheels and they're always torn about which they should buy and why and I know it was a kit so I bought um, one of the kits and it was the baby bobbin kit not the lace kit. So the baby bobbin kit includes two baby bobbins and a lace flyer. The kit has two functions. Firstly, it can either be used as a plying set for lace bobbins. A baby bobbin can fit up to two lace bobbins of yarn onto it, so it's a great complement to the lace kit. Alternative, it can be used as a slow drag spinning kit. The smaller flyer and bobbin can be have a lower rotational inertia than their larger counter counterparts, so they require less, eff less effort to spin faster and longer. Whereas the lace kit, um, includes two whirls, a lace flyer, and the fast whirl. Maybe I did get the lace kit. Huh. I did get the lace kit. So the lace e flyer and the e hook are have hard wearing in ceramic inserts, and the ceramic has very low friction co uh, coefficient. So the spun yarn glides effortlessly effortlessly through the guides which is totally true and then the whirls it gave me a bigger range of whirls so the whirls um gave me oops i hate reading off my phone this is why i i would i i miss my um my tablet but it got broken um so the fast whirl um is for spinning ultra fine yarns it doesn't actually say what the ratios are on it but I know that it goes really high shoot can't find it maybe it's under the actual wheel itself here we go Susie 
Okay, so the High Speed Whirl, which is the one that I got with the lace kit, um, it goes up to 27 to 1. So it's 11.4, 15.4, and 20.4, and 27 to 1. So it's quite a big range. So um, the reason why I got that, the, the, the lace kit and the High Speed Whirl, to go back to what I was saying, was when I took the, before I took the Bass Fibers course, I had always been told that you really need the higher whirls to spin cotton and to spin um, a lot of the bass fibers. Like you just need more twist. So it's not that that's not true, um, but I spun both of these yarns on 15 to one, 14.5 to one, sorry. And they turned out beautifully. They're not too high twisted. They're not too um, over twisted. They're really beautifully balanced. And the yarn didn't fall apart when I was plying it because I plied it with a uh, bracelet. Um, and the more I spin these plant-based fibers, whether it's cotton or bast or linen, or like I've got some um, Raimi here that I pulled off of one of my shacked bobbins um, that I spun back in the summer and I just haven't plied it yet, um, which is here. I just need to ply it. It's sitting here on my desk in a center pole ball and I just haven't actually like um, plied it. Um, I'm finding that more and more, it's not that the higher ratios don't help, but they don't, you don't necessarily need these really super high ratios. Like I don't think that I really need 27 to one to spin these fibers really well. Um, and that was certainly the case with this. Um, the, the, the ratios on the, the fast whirl, like the 15.4 to one, that would have been nice to have. It would have given me just a little bit more twist, but um, it's not, it's definitely not a need to have. And um, I've really noticed that with cotton in particular, you don't need a ton of twist once you set that twist. As long as you can get it plied, it's quite amazing how quickly, like how nice it sets. And actually not having the higher twist, it creates this really soft, lovely yarn. I mean, it feels different from wool. It's definitely not wool, but it's got a nice feel regardless. And I really like it. So I'm starting to find I really, I'm really enjoying the variety of spinning plants and wool and some of the in that vast fibers course um, I we got to spin a whole bunch of wool vast fiber blends and I'm really um, I really enjoyed a couple of them a couple of them were really really nice um, the ones that we hand combed ourselves I liked the best um, because the ones that were commercial top they were, and I'm sure many of you have experienced this, they were um, like streaked. So there was like the linen, the merino, and then, you know, whatever else, it would, the silk, if it was blended with silk. So it was like very separate, whereas the samples that we actually hand combed ourselves um, and were able to blend ourselves, on, it most, the hand combs were the ones that worked the best. Uh, they were way nicer to spin. Um, because they were so nicely blended whereas the commercial the commercial combed top was very difficult because it was very very separate and i'm sure those of you who have spun some of those blends know what i'm talking about um they just end up coming off of the machines very separate and it's almost like they're in like it's like like with some of the comb top you know how when you open it up you can you can divide it into the different strips really easily with this it was it was just exactly like that like it was these strips and then you're trying to like mix it together to spin it and the reality is it just doesn't mix that well it doesn't blend that well when you do it by hand um, on the comb top whereas if you do it with combs and and often like there's it's so fine that you end up just spinning off the comb because you don't want to pull it off the comb because then it just flies everywhere so um i'm i'm yeah so that just an aside <laughs> Um, I think I have a couple of those blends in my stash. Like I've got a, uh, linen merino flax blend in my stash and the colors will muddy if I blend them with my hand combs. But I think that that's exactly what I'm going to do because it's just not enjoyable to spin. So it would be better to mix it all up and comb it and get it nicely blended than to leave it as is and spin it and have it so separate. So anyways, that is, um, I, I, I kind of feel like with some of this stuff, it's almost better 
this is just my own personal like preference it's almost better to buy this stuff individually and have it like buy it raw so like you buy a bag of, of Ramy, you buy a bag of silk tessa silk or whatever you buy a you know a bag of um you know um merino or whatever you want to blend with and then do it by hand rather than buying a, a blend that's already blended because it just they don't blend very well so um, Candy was saying not long ago she spun a merino flax tensile blend that was really amazing so I know there are some nice ones out there and um, it's just a matter of finding them the more expensive they are usually the better blended they are but that's not necessarily the case so just depends on what, what you like and what what you don't like um, I thought I would really quickly talk about the Sweet Georgia Club from this month so this was wobble it was um it was kind of a difficult colorway to spin because uh, it was a colorway that was um, had a lot of different color in it so it had um, this pink very like cotton candy pink and then it had this soft peach and turquoise and blue and purple and burgundy <laughs> like it just had a lot of color in it and uh, Felicia wrote that it was that she called it wobble because there was something about this colorway that was a little bit difficult to um, rectify um, it was a lot of color and it was sort of um, just felt like it was a little bit off um, so I was in charge of spinning this month um, Katrina did last month so this month was my month I did this while we were away um, and uh, it turned out okay um, it kind of looks like a unicorn tail to me or like a like a mermaid tail um, I folded I divided up the fiber and I actually folded it in half so that I could combination draft it which is what um, Felicia had um, recommended there are some really interesting pl places where I thought for sure it would really heather and blend and it didn't and then there are other areas where I thought for sure it would stay really clean and it would look really you know and the colors would match up and then they didn't so it's kind of funny how that sort of happened um, the one thing I will say is as soon as I brought this home it's all washed and, and blocked and everything and I, I did some sampling of it I did a woven sample and I also did a knitted sample so this is um, gonna be the uh, how I spin content for December which was actually really fun to do I really enjoyed doing the sampling and Nora was watching me the whole time and she's like I really like that yarn I really like that purple in that yarn and she kept saying like you know she kept looking at it and she kept like fingering it and she come up and like look at it and touch it I really like that purple anyways it's very Disney princess you're right Becca um, this is not my taste this is I do not like this at all um, but I really appreciate that especially the purples in here um, it really dances and um, it's got quite a bit of depth and it's just it's just it's quite pretty um, I think it's quite young in a lot of ways like um, Becca's right like it's very Disney in some ways Nora loves it she's three and a half how could you not so I'm actually going to I skeined it up so that I could do a couple of photos of it but um, I'm going to uh, wind it back into a ball and I'm actually going to um, knit a pair of um, uh, mittens for Nora for Christmas out of it. So they'll go into her stocking. I'm not going to show her um, because it's superwash merino. So it's actually kind of perfect for mittens for her. Um, I'm going to knit it very, very, very tightly on a really, really tight gauge. Um, this turned out to be about sort of a, a DK heavy sport um, in places. And then in other places, it's more like a... Like a worsted you can see my my spinning wasn't super consistent with this yarn and a lot of it's because I started out so the the fiber was was um, folded in half in the parts that I broke it and so it would start off like as a worsted draw and then sort of as I got further and further back to the loop I switched it over to spinning from the fold so unfortunately it's not my like most even spinning ever um, and I wouldn't recommend like if I was to do this again I would do it completely differently um, but it was really cool to go through that process and to say you know what I actually wouldn't spin that that way again um, but I think it'll make great mittens for her and I might even put a cable up the back to sort of uh, mix it up a little bit or do like seed stitch or something um, and like I said I'm gonna knit it really 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 tightly I'll probably knit it um, on like three millimeter needles or even like 2.75 millimeter needles so it's super 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 dense and then um, they'll be quite hard wearing for her and then if there's any left over I'll do a matching toque for her cousin um, because uh, Claire needs a new toque and um, 
she outgrew her toque that I made for her last year, which is totally fine, but she needs a new toque. So I'll probably do a matching toque out of this for Claire. Um, and then both girls get a little bit of this yarn since it's so perfect for both of them because their favorite colors are turquoise purple and um, Claire actually really really loves like navy blue and stuff and Nora really likes navy blue and she really likes um, um, like cream and white and stuff she's, she's both girls sort of have an interesting color preference so I thought this yarn would be absolutely perfect for the two girls because um, it is sort of um, it actually made me think of um, the unicorn frap. Um, and Jess, who was with us this past weekend, she said it looked like a unicorn barf, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. So, yeah, it's pretty. It's not my taste, but it's pretty, and it's great for the girls, so I will definitely use it. Um, yeah, and some, it, you know, it's funny. Eve commented about the barber pulling. It is really interesting that it, I, I was actually really surprised it didn't barber pull more. Um, it actually made me realize how much of that cotton candy pink is in there like this this pink um, When you unbraided it, it looked like there was a lot of it But but when I was but then you know after I broke it up and everything I was like, oh, there's not that much But once I started spinning I was like, yeah, no, there's a ton of that color in there Which was really interesting, which I think is part of the reason why Nora likes it so much. So um, Really interesting spin learned a lot um I finished another uh, spin from my bin. So this is part of my spin the bin. Um, uh, I had 12 braids of fiber that I threw in. This is my third from last. So I've got, I still have three braids of fiber to go. I started one and I've got two more. Um, this is a three ply sock yarn. This is Sweet Georgia Yarns in Amethyst. And I actually had two braids of this. So this is the other one that I haven't spun yet and it wasn't in my bin for this year. Um, but this is what it looks like side by side. So this is the fiber before spinning. This is what it looks like after. This is a traditional three ply. Um, I broke the braid up. So originally, talk about no pre-planning. All I knew with this fiber, it's Superwash BFL. All I knew before I um, was going to spin it was that I was going to do a three ply. I, that was sort of all I knew. I w And I wasn't going to chain ply. So... I started, so I broke up the braid, I laid it out, divided it um, horizontally, so, you know, had these three sort of short-ish lengths of fiber, and um, I started spinning the first one, and about halfway through, because I was spinning across the top, I was like, oh, I'm just so annoyed with this. Um, it's super wash, it tends to fall apart, it tends to be very... Um, what's that word like it, it just is very fly away so as soon as you get into spinning superwash it tends to start to not fall apart per se but it gets very wispy that's the word I'm looking for so you see how it gets just and it's hard to hold it together this is superwash as well so I oh no this isn't superwash what is this oh this is BFL silk but very similar they just get wispy and they tend to fall apart so I was trying to decide what to do and in the end, I actually decided, so that, that was the first bump. And then the second bump, I, I stripped it like 18 times. So then I had these little teeny tiny nests to work with. So then that was the second, the second ply. And then the third ply, the third single, I only divided it like four or five times. So this unintentionally ended up being a fractal. <laughs> um, it's a semi-solid, so spinning it as a fractal doesn't really matter. It's not going to make any, any difference um, but it was interesting in the plying because there are some big sections where the colors actually did match up and they matched up for a long time um, and I actually I'm really pleased with this um, it's got a really nice twist angle and um, I'll just open it up for you so that you can really see it and I'll see if I can get the camera to focus um, this is washed and set and it's still got quite a bit of twist um, in it and there are places where it sort of um, you can really see in here the twist angle is about 50 to 50 55 degrees I've got fiber on my nose Ugh. Um, and it you know one of the things I'm really surprised about is um, it's actually turned out to be quite even like for all I kept changing my spinning technique like going from spinning across the top to spinning 
um, from little nests to spinning with the fiber only stripped down four or five times. It's amazing how even it ended up being, which I think is more a testimony to my um, how my hands were, like how I was working my hands, because I'm working on another spin that's very similar to this, which I'll show you in a minute, this BFL silk. And I was really finding for a while there that if I changed up in a spin how the fiber was prepped, like if I was spinning across the top and then switched to a different way for a different, um, for a different single, especially like for fractals because you're spinning across, the, you're spinning one end to end and you're spinning another one where it's all stripped down and you're spinning another one where it's only stripped down a little bit. I was finding that my spinning would change a little bit and, and the, the grist of my singles would change. So the grist is like the thickness, um, the number of fibers in that strand and in that singles. Um, and it affects your yards per pound. But you know, it's interesting because I wound these three onto um, weaving bobbins because I spun all of it to one bobbin with a spacer in between. And if you're not sure how to do that, I do have a, a video up on YouTube. Um, it's one of the teaching content videos of how to do that. And I was really amazed actually when I was winding the bobbins how even they ended up being and how um, even the singles ended up being. And that translated to a really, really even yarn, um, which is kind of neat. So I'm actually really excited to knit with this. My original plan was to do socks um, because my purple Cheviot socks, they felted. Um, they're my favorite socks ever and they got thrown so Chevy, it's a down breed and it is resistant to felting. However, um, it, they got thrown into a warm water wash with soap, obviously, because it's a washing machine, and they got um, tumble dried by accident. So they kind of had like the triple whammy and they felted. Um, so while the down breeds are inconsistent with felting, they will still felt. Um, and I had always washed them on a cold water wash and then just hung them to dry. And it, it was totally my fault. They got thrown into the wrong wash and, um, unfortunately they felted. So this colorway is very, very similar to that colorway that I had done for my Cheviot socks. So that's why I was thinking about replacing them with this. And I might actually take it at Christmas time and do um, my socks, take this colorway and do socks, um, like I said, because I was going to take a sock project. Um, I have to admit, you guys are all saying how much you love Cheviot. I love spinning Cheviot. I love it. It's one of my favorite fibers and I can get it locally, um, which I, which is even better. And uh, yeah, I really like it. I'll show you though. I don't know if you can see this still has, or it did. It had a lot of twists still in it, but I think cause it's been skeined. Superwash, we talked about this. Did we talk about this last show or the show before? We talked about it on the last live stream. So not last show, but the show before. Um, Superwash, I find the longer that it's skeined and the longer that it sits, the more twist it loses. So like if it sits like this for any length of time, I find that when you come back to it, you know, a few months, couple months, six months down the road, some of the twists will come out. And this, now that it's been sitting, because I applied it uh, right after the last episode, so three weeks ago now, um, two weeks ago, I have noticed it's already lost some of its twists, so I probably will throw it back through the wheel before I cast it on. And if I do that, I will show it to you next episode. Um, because right now it's perfectly balanced and I don't want perfectly balanced yarn for socks. I want it to be a little bit more tightly twisted. So I will probably throw it back through the wheel and then, um, and then cast on. And Nora wants something out of it too. So I have about 450 yards. So I'm thinking that, um, I'm thinking that I'll do, I don't know, I was going to say socks for her too, but I'll probably use it in like the brim of a toque, like do the, the ribbing and then do a couple of um, rows of this or maybe stripe it or something because I have some Coriadale that I spun that's the same weight, it's fingering and it would look really great with this and I could do a toque for her. So she really wants some of it for her, so that's fine. Of course, I never get to this stuff, but one day, one day. Um, yes, I am not a superwash fan. <laughs> you guys know that. Um, Candy was saying that she's only ever spun superwash once and she didn't like it. And I, I'm inclined to agree with you. Um, I have a little bit of it left in my stash. I've probably got about, 
half a dozen braids left in my stash that are all super washed and once I get through those I'm really hoping that I can keep it out of my stash from now on although um, I do spin it for um, socks because we live in a house with dogs and kids and busyness and I just can't not do um, super wash for socks so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that um, I took um, yes, Nora does want all things purple. Katrina, you know all about that. <laughs> Nora is hilarious. Um, remember that Halloween bat that I had done? Do you guys remember? I will pull up a picture. Um, I had spun up that, no, I had done that video. So this was really fun. I am really surprised about how fun this was. Um, and it was so funny because, so... I have to tell you guys this. Um, oh, before we move on, Carissa's wondering what I don't like about Superwash. There are a lot of things I don't like about Superwash. The number one thing that I don't like about Superwash, and I suspect a lot of people um, in this community will chime in, and we've talked about it a lot on um, the Slack channel and, and in the Ravelry group. Um, the biggest thing about Superwash that I don't like is the actual environmental impact of Superwash. The chemicals that they use to make yarn Superwash are incredibly harmful. Um, there have been some other um, um, processes that have been invented that other that some companies in in North America um, have used, but uh, have developed that are that are a little bit nicer to the environment than the actual Superwash patented process. Um, that said, um, superwash, like what we find in um, comb top, it's very, very damaging to the environment to go through the superwash process. And a really strong case could be made for the fact that once a wool is made superwash, it's not really wool anymore. It loses so many of the properties that make wool wool. Um, this is superwash here. And um, it's so all of the scales on the wool have been completely um, burned off with the superwash um, chemicals. And um, so in that process, it means that the, the wool fibers can no longer adhere to one another. And the problem with that is that when you're adding twist to your yarn, um, there's nothing to really hold it together. You can't wash it in warm water and give it a good thwacking or give it a good snap and set those fibers together like you can with a non-superwash wool. So there's nothing to hold that twist. Um, cotton, you can set the twist by boiling. Um, wool, you can set it by, by putting in warm water with a bit of soap and then thwacking it after. But with superwash, there's nothing to set it. So theoretically, I could untwist these fibers very easily and pull them apart. So they need to have a lot of um, twist added. And it's one of the reasons why nylon started to be added to um, wool socks is because they were super wash and so they needed something for strength. Um, so that's why nylon was added. So a lot of people have gone backwards, like have gone back and said, well, we don't need nylon if we're using 100% wool and not super wash anymore. Um, this is a conversation that we have been having like on an ongoing basis since I think since I started podcasting, it's been something that's been very relevant for many of us in the, um, community. So if you want to continue chatting about, um, the superwash stuff and, and getting more information, please don't hesitate to ask. There's been lots and lots of blog posts written. Um, Bren Boone over at Snurb Yarn wrote a really great blog post about a year ago, um, on the superwash process. And there's lots and lots of stuff that you can learn about. Um, about Superwash, why it's damaging, why it's not a great fiber to choose if you are hope, if you are sort of um, looking for fiber and, and wool that is environmentally um, kind and also for sustainability. Um, and I could go on and on, but I'm not because we need to move on. <laughs> and actually Becca has a really good, uh, really good point. Um, it gets a bit lifeless and that's absolutely what happens. So like this yarn is really lifeless compared to say this yarn, which I'm going to talk about next. Um, this yarn here feels very artificial, even though it's it's BFL, but it's superwash, and this isn't superwash, and it, it has a a sproing to it and a life to it that this will will never have because it has no scales. Um, so let's move on to this. So I had um, made that Halloween bat, and I'm just gonna pull up a photo of it. 
Oh, and you guys are asking about toques in the Ravelry, or sorry, in the pop-up chat. So let me just look. What was the question about toques? Um, oh, Katrina already um, answered it. Yeah. A toque is basically um, a Canadian term for beanie or um, any, it's, it's basically any knitted toque, like any knitted hat. So it can be a beanie, it can be a slouchy, it can be like anything. It's not a, not a baseball hat, but anything that's um, a knitted hat is a toque in Canada. Um, it's a French word, by the way. It came from Quebec, um, if anybody cares. <laughs> um, so I made this at Halloween, and there was a, um, a really hilarious um, um, YouTube video that went along with it that I released on, um, on Halloween. Um, the music was meant to be a total joke. Like, the whole thing was meant to be just totally silly. And um, I took the bat with me when we went away last, last week. Uh, last weekend. I, I wasn't going to take it. I was actually going to leave it and spin it in the summer and then um, release the yarn next year. But I was so excited to spin it and I thought, you know, I may as well just spin it up and see what I think. Um, and it turned out amazing. And I have to tell you a little story about this yarn because um, it it's sort of a bit, a bit silly. Um, so I was spinning it and I was really, I really enjoyed spinning it right from like the first minute I started spinning. So the bat went from uh, black to green, black to green to purple. No, it went green, purple, black, orange. Um, so you can kind of see it. it um, and the purple was quite like purple. You can see it here on the on the yarn. And the orange was that neon orange. I had a little tiny bit of it left from club back in in August of twenty seven of twenty sixteen. Yeah, it was. Oh my goodness gracious! It was two, a year and a half ago. Holy smokes. Um. Anyways. So, um, I started spinning, and um, I just immediately fell in love with like spinning it. Like I don't know what it was. There's Perindale in here, Coriadale, Merino, Sparkle. So there's Angelina and Firestar. Um, and there's Targi in here. So it's just like a whole mash of fibers from my stash. And um, I really, really enjoyed spinning it. So I really, um, I had a lot of fun making it. And then I thought I put it off to the side and I kind of had it like on my desk and I kept seeing it. And I was like, oh, I don't want to wreck it. I don't want to spin it. Typical spinner stuff. I don't want to wreck it. And uh, <clears throat> um, so I decided at the very last second to take it with me on our retreat weekend. And then um, I was getting really bogged down with my Romney mohair spin, which I'm almost done. I can't believe it. I'm almost done. And um, I decided to take a break and spin this. And um, about two seconds into spinning it, I was like, oh, I really like this. Oh, I really like this a lot. And then the girls started teasing me because there was so much sparkle in here. <laughs> and you can't really see it in the camera, unfortunately. But like, honest to goodness, there is so much sparkle. And um, if anybody doesn't know, you maybe don't know this about Katrina. She actually doesn't really love sparkle. She likes a little bit of it, but she doesn't like a lot of sparkle. So we kept joking about... Um, that we were going to make make this yarn for Katrina and we were going to add even more sparkle and we were going to give it to her as like a joke that I was going to, for Christmas, make her this big sparkle bat and give it to her and be like, you know, do you like your Christmas present? And we just giggled and giggled and giggled about it because there is so much sparkle in here and I don't know if you can see it as I'm moving it around, but honest to goodness, like there is so much sparkle. I love it so much. And Katrina was just like grimacing. She's a senior going, oh yeah, that's nice. It was so funny. Um, and the Angelina that I found was perfect. It was a perfect match. Um, let me see if I can reach it. So it's almost kind of like this like pinky color, but next to the orange, it was just perfect. And it's like got this kind of gold color to it. It's see, isn't that, that's insane. Isn't that insane? I, Katrina, you just love it, don't you? This is like your favorite thing ever. <laughs> She's grimacing. So anyway, so this turned out really, really, really well. I was really happy with it. And um, I was beaming after it was done. And um, the cool thing is, is that it ends with this green. 
So the bat, the last part of the bat was this green. And so, and I have a ton of this color in my stash, tons and tons and tons. And I actually have like an entire um, bat that I had carted up um, probably a year ago now, like maybe even longer, that is that color. And I have another one that is this purple color. And so I'm thinking about spinning those up separately and because originally I was going to blend them together, but it'll make like a, um, like a muddy color. So I think I'll spin the green and I'll spin the, now I have sparkle on me, um, and I'll spin the purple. And then I'm going to do a striping shawl and then I'll finish off the border of the shawl with this, with this in garter stitch. Because um, it'll move from the green to the purple to the black to the orange and finish off with the orange at the bottom. Um, and I can spin more of the orange. I think I can still get this orange color. Um, sorry, I think I still have some of this orange in my stash and uh, that would it would just be so much fun to have a Halloween shawl. Um, even though I'm not a big Halloween fan, I just thought it would be really like, I don't know, you pull it out once a year, you wear it for a few days, like how cool would that be? So um, that's my thought. I'm thinking just like a vanilla shawl striped two by two striping with the yellow, with the, um, with the purple and the green and then um, have a big garter stitch border with the with the orange. So it would just be something super fun. Um, does that qualify as a hap? I don't know. Doesn't seem very hapish. Um, this like god awful or orange Halloween shawl. Um, Oh, that totally is like the Wicked Witch. And actually, I was thinking about naming, like nicknaming this uh, colorway, like Wicked, because um, it's so like like that. If it, if there wasn't the orange in there, it would be just totally like the musical Wicked. Um. Oh, thanks, Candy. I'll let you know. Um, she still has some of that fiber. So I finished spinning this. I need to get a move on with the show because I actually have to pick up Nora early, and I've got to get James because of immunizations. So. Um, I'm talking a lot and you guys are chatting away, which is awesome, but I need to keep moving. Um, this is the agate colorway from Kinfolk Yarn. I'm really disappointed with how I spun this. It has nothing to do with the colorway or with, um, Kylan's, um, um, dyeing. Cause honest to goodness, like her dyeing is just gorgeous. Um, I'm really disappointed with how I spun it. So it's ended up coming out, um, an Aran weight. It's quite heavy. Um, I know Katrina, I'm totally nuts. I know. Um, <laughs> um, this, so this is Superwash Targi. This is one of the, this is one of two braids in my stash. I've talked about this on the show before. And I had said that I was going to spin up the eight ounces and then I was hoping to do a really big vanilla shawl. So I started spinning it. I spun it on my Lendrum. Um, it was quite fast. Um, I didn't strip it down more than, I think I stripped it like 14 times and I just started spinning. And it was, for whatever reason, I just wasn't happy with it right from when I started. And I, I think I talked about it last time on the show. Um, it, the Targi just, I wasn't, I didn't like how it was spinning. I didn't, I wasn't enjoying spinning it. It was just this like pulling teeth exercise. So I decided to ply it with itself and not spin the other four ounces yet. And I don't know what I'm going to do. I might save this skein and put it in our artisan sale next year and get another four ounces from Kylan instead because this isn't what I was going for. And the more I spun it, the more I had wished that I had spun it finer so that I could chain ply it because there's these places in here that I just absolutely love the colors and they matched up. And then like this, this gorgeous like purpley gray up here. But then there's all this barber pulling in here that's quite distinct. Like it's a lot of barber pull. And I like barber pull to a certain extent. But it just wasn't really, I, I just am not, I'm not happy with this basically is what I'm trying to say. It's about 300 yards um, and um, it's not spun particularly evenly because about halfway through the first bobbin I realized that I wasn't really liking it and it wasn't really what I was going for. Um, I, I don't know why, it just doesn't make my heart sing. So, um, and this colorway is my absolute most favorite colorway that Kylan has. I just love this colorway. It's agate. It, I, it's totally my colors. I just absolutely love it. For whatever reason, I was really disappointed with this, um, with how, it, with how I spun it and how it turned out. Um, one of the things that I was talking to Katrina about recently, we were talking about it, um, on our way to the ferry. 
um, or maybe it was on the way back from the ferry. I have no idea. Um, it's such a blur right now, all the things that are going on. Um, I have kind of gotten to the point, and this actually takes me to my next spin. So let me, t let me tell you about my next spin. So there's this one, and then I, this is part of my bin spin as well. So this is Pacific Spirit um, in BFL Silk. It was from the seconds bin. Um, and let me just adjust the camera. And um, it's this really crazy bright colorway. I've been slowly unbraiding it as I've been spinning it. So as I get to the next bump, I un, un I um you know un, unbraid it. So I've left it braided. I usually don't spin using this particular method, but I am this time. And I have been um, using my lace flyer for this and spinning on 14, 14 to one. And I'm actually, part of the reason why I'm doing this with this spin is I'm actually wondering how much actually fits on these bobbins. Um, I'm very, very curious. So I was going to spin as much as I possibly can onto this bobbin and just see because, um, well, I'm curious more than anything so that I know for future how much fits on these bobbins. So um, the reason why I'm introducing this at the same time as talking about this is because this I'm spinning um, for a three ply sock yarn. So it's going to be chain plied. Um, and I have a plan for this. It's not actually going to turn into socks, um, but I, I don't want to get into what it's going to be today because it's just would take me forever to explain. But basically, um, this is going to be a three ply. And it's going to be a fingering weight. And um, so the, the singles are being spun at roughly 32 to 1, at 32 wraps per inch, sorry. Let me see if I have my... I don't know if I have my um, um, let me see if I have a control card and I can show you um, so I'm spinning this roughly 32 wraps per inch I think might be a bit finer than that actually just move the keyboard here hang on guys one sec all these things going on today um, yeah, so 32 to 1, so I'll show you that. Sorry, it's not in focus. And, um, so, and I really, really like, and, and I spun the purple, the amethyst, the three-ply Superwash BFL to 32 to 1. And I really, really like what the singles look like. I like how the colors come out. I like, um... I just like what the yarn looks like. I spun this at 32 to 1 as well. Like I just have that like, like I just fall into that weight, if you will. Like it just kind of naturally gets, things get spun at that weight if I, at the, the at that wraps print, if I don't intentionally change it. And I think what I've come to the conclusion about is regardless of um, what I want the finished yarn to be, so whether I want it to be sport weight, Aran weight, fingering, it doesn't really matter. I really, really like those finer um, singles. I like what they look like in the finished yarn. Um, I like what they look like in commercial yarn. I like what they look like in, in hand spun. When I see other people's yarns, I really like what it looks like. And it's just what I like. Um, and so as soon as I spin these thicker yarns, um, I just don't love what they look like. And like I said, this is all me. This is my, my journey and what I like. And I think I'm kind of at the point with my spinning where I don't get a ton done like I did a couple of years ago because of just the stage of life that we're at. And I'm sort of at the point where I really am starting to appreciate the idea. And you hear other spinners talking about this as well. And there's a couple of spinners in our guild that are like this. They spin relatively the same grist of singles and the same um, wraps per inch of singles pretty much every time. And then they ply for thickness. And I'm really interested in this idea of plying for thickness versus um, spinning for thickness. So spinning a certain wraps per inch of the singles to get a certain wraps per inch for your finished yarn. So instead of spinning this um, at say, I think I spun it at like, you know, 18 wraps per inch or whatever to get about 12 wraps per inch in the finished yarn, something like that. Or I think it was like nine wraps per inch in the finished yarn. Um, I think I would have preferred to just make this a four ply if I had wanted that thickness of yarn. Does that make sense? And then Targi, of course, like poofs up a whole bunch. So then you've got to take that into consideration. But I'm kind of at that point where I just really like the finer singles. And that's definitely like how I'm kind of shifting. 
Um, and so over the next little while, I'm going to sort of play around with that and see where I come up with, because maybe that won't be the case at all. And my, and my initial thoughts around that won't be the case. And that's not what I'll have, what I'll conclude. But my Romney mohair spin that I've been working on, that's the pound. Um, the more I spin on it, because I'm spinning quite fine singles on that as well. Um, the more I'm spinning on it, the more I'm like, you know, I, I really like the idea of spinning it to be a three ply um, because my singles are so fine, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, Becca says, so spinning for thick, so plying for thickness really affects your color management, which is a really good point um, because she's right, it does. Um, you're going to get yarns that are more speckled and more, more blended um, and you're going to end up more like what you, what happens in a traditional three ply where it mixes the colors up quite a bit. So that's why I'm curious about that because that's what I like. Um, so yeah, the last thing that I wanted to talk about... I'm just reading one of the things that um, somebody asked. I'm not sure, Amy, what you mean about your question. Doesn't how much fits on the bobbin partly? Um, oh, like how much fits on the bobbin partly depend on the wool and the grist. Yes, that's true. Um, but what on the reason why I'm wondering how much actually fits on this bobbin is because I would be using this for mostly lace spinning and spinning sock yarn. So um, I'm wondering, based on fine singles, if I can fit a full four ounces on here. There is no way I could fit four ounces of like a heavier yarn, but a fine yarn, you can fit way more on the bobbin. And so that's why I'm wondering. I hope that that um, answers your question. And if not, just say. Um, this project is the one that I have been working on in the background and I haven't told you guys about yet. So this is that yarn that I had made that my friend Charlotte had dyed up and um, it was on Superwash BFL and it was in her, um, uh, it was in the second spin at Sweet Georgia and I, I saw it and I just fell in love with it and I snagged it. Um, and I spun it up, do you remember this yarn? You guys will probably remember this yarn. I talked about it quite a bit on the show. Um, I spun it as a two ply and um, I'll see if I can find a picture of the yarn. The camera's blowing out a little bit right now and it was that I've got the really, really big skein and then I have um, a, a smaller skein of this yarn. I've got about 800 yards of it and it's um, it's a sort of a heavy lace, heavy lace weight and this is how it's knitting up and it's just beautiful. And I kind of made up the pattern on my own. Um, I was going to do just a regular vanilla shawl, like I was just going to do like a, you know, um, no striping or, or no patterning. I was just going to do stockinette stitch and grow the shawl um, organically and sort of stop when I was happy with the size. This this was the yarn. But I decided in the end to um, not do that. And I actually put in a little bit of patterning. So there's some garter stitch in there. And um, it's basically two garter stitch ridges. And then um, let me just zoom in and see if I can fix the focus two garter stitch ridges and then the I'm having trouble finding my words there we go that's better two garter stitch ridges and then uh, three stockinette rows I guess so three stockinette rows and then two garter stitch ridges so basically a five um, seven seven row repeat so knit four rows and then um, purl knit purl um, for three rows so it's turning out really nicely I'm really happy with this you want to know what my aesthetic is this is my aesthetic this is what I love um, I love these natural blues and browns and yellows like they're just and I think when it blocks out I think it's gonna be really pretty um, I'm hoping I can stretch it this way and, and stretch it this way to keep the garter stitch from pulling apart and I think it'll be really pretty. So I am, I'm knitting this on quite small needles, 3.75 millimeter needles. I probably could have gone down to three and a half, but I didn't want to, um, I didn't want it to be dense. I still wanted it to have a really nice drape and so far, so far so good. So yeah, so that's what I'm working on. And then I also, I'm almost done. Oh, I 
have to show you guys these. This is the last thing, and then I'm going to say goodbye. Um, because I have to go get Nora. These shows always end up so long when I'm live streaming. There is so much to talk about with you guys, and having you guys chime in and chat too, it just makes it so rich. Like, I find the shows are so much richer in content because you guys are, are there and pitching in too. And I just love that. Um, and I really, with that one, with the shawl, it's going to take me a long time. I'm, I think it's going to be my hap. I just don't see how I'm going to get anything else cast on before between now and Christmas. And um, I'll probably take it with us to Toronto and uh, work on it along with the um, Glow Beauty from Within shawl. So this is the Into the World um, yarn. I've showed this on the show before. I'm not going to bother fiddling with the camera to get it all um, in focus. So when I showed this to you last, I was about here. And I hadn't really made any progress. But then I had um, a Skype date with Becca and Katrina. And I worked on them. And then I had a Skype date with Heidi from Vegan Yarn. So I ended up actually getting like all the way up to the ribbing on this first sock. So I am ribbing away and I turned the heel and uh, I'm really really happy with how these are turning out they are just so cool and I love how the speckle is turning out and this is the top of the sock like isn't that cool um I love this gray in here and how that with the blue I think they are so pretty I'm really looking forward to it. So these are Superwash Targi. It was a three ply that I did. And actually, I'll see if I have a picture of the original colorway, like the original fiber, because it was so cool with the neon yellowy, yellowy green. Um, I just have to see if I can find it. I spun this a long time ago. Um, and it was a colorway called, it was Into the World, and it was called Eating eating grapes off wallpaper or something or eating wallpaper off grapes I can't remember it was part of the um, spin the bin and this was the original that was the original color of the braid so really interesting Let's see if it'll focus it was a really cool colorway with that neon in there and the dark blue and it's amazing how it sort of ended up working up in the end um, and actually, after I applied it, so after I did the traditional three ply, I think I spun it as a fractal. Actually, I really regretted not doing the um, Navajo, not chain plying it, because I loved what the chain ply looks like. But now, after knitting them, I'm glad I did this because this is so much more interesting. So it actually ended up working out in the end. It's amazing how once you knit with your yarns, your whole attitude towards the yarn completely changes. So now I just need to cast, get these cast off. I try not to cast off my socks unless I can start the next, the next sock right away. So I'm kind of waiting for a, for a window of time when I can finish the ribbon, cast it off, and cast on the other one right away. Because I find otherwise I cast off and then I don't start the other one. Um, it just ends up being put off and put off and put off. And, and it you know, second sock syndrome is real. And um, it's nice to be able to start the other one right away. So those are almost done. And then I'll uh, hopefully have a pair of socks by Christmas time. So, and then I can start my purple ones, which is kind of fun. So... Um, does anybody have any questions or anything before I say goodbye? Um, we have the live stream coming up in December. That will be the only show in December, like I said. And I have a ton of prizes to give away that show, so please get your stuff in for Zero to Hero. Um, and I don't think there's anything else. I haven't, there's two people that are waiting for calendars from me, Jess Ann and uh, Linda. I haven't mailed them out yet because we've had so much going on here, but I will send them out this week. So please watch the mail for that. And um, I don't think there's anything else, any other announcements that I need to make. But if there is anything, please uh, let me know. Oh, Amy, it's her 60th birthday today. Happy birthday to Amy. And oh, and it was her first live show. So um, that is just awesome. Carissa says to knit socks two at a time. I cannot stand knitting socks two at a time. I have knit so many pairs of socks and I just hate doing it that way. So um, I find I actually get socks done in the exact same amount of time if I um, do it the way I do it so there's a couple of it was funny on the weekend because um, two people were knitting socks two at a time and uh, it's just not for me I have tried it 
Um, oh, and Grace, it was her first live stream too. So I'm so glad that you guys were able to uh, check in today. Um, thank you so much for joining me and for taking time out of your schedules to spend this time with me. It means a lot. Um, we are working towards live streaming all the shows so that um, all of the shows, um, every single time I record, it would be this format. Um, we're almost there and um, I hope that we can get there in the new year at some point so that we can live stream just every show and I can spend this time with you twice, two times a month. Um, until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and uh, happy spinning and I'll see you in December. Bye guys.